Now, has there ever been times when you think you are on top of your game and then something comes and totally baffles you and you think, really, I don't know anything? Well, it's happened to me quite a few times. So in this particular instance, when I got completely baffled, when I thought I knew everything, this is about the topic of charged downpipes. So you might ask, what has charged downpipes, roofs and roof leaks got to do with each other? Well, we had an interesting problem on one of our jobs. There was this roof that kept leaking. So every time there was a really heavy rain, there'll be a leak. And we spent lots of goes at trying to figure out what actually caused it. And then at one point in time, Mason said, listen, this is the weird downpipe. I tap it and it's not hollow, it's full of water. So what's happening? Now, this is the first time we've ever come across this problem with a charged downpipe. So as we did more research on why this downpipe should be full of water, we learned about charged downpipes. And charged downpipes should be full of water. That's how they've been designed. So the question is, why are there charged downpipes? Because normally a downpipe would be empty and it will discharge the gutter water onto the stormwater system, which goes out into the stormwater drains and the downpipes are never full of water. If the downpipe's full of water, there's a blockage somewhere and the water's not been released. So why all of a sudden we get downpipes that are full of water and they're designed to be full of water? Well, it's all to do with BASIC. And if you don't know, BASIC is a code in which we have to design for sustainability, which means that when it comes to water, we've got to catch the water and reuse the rainwater so that we don't have to rely on town water as much. So here in Australia, we have the basic rules, which says you've got to have a water tank that catches the rainwater from a roof, which now means that you've got to have a downpipe that carries the water to a water tank. So the question is, how do you get the water to run down a downpipe and into a water tank? Well, there's two ways of doing it. One, if you've got your tank fairly close to the house, near your wall, you can drop the downpipe straight into the water tank. And this is what is called a dry system. Um, there are no charged downpipes. The downpipe is like a normal downpipe. It's full when it's raining and it's empty when it stops raining because the water goes straight into the tank. Now, the second system is what they call a wet system. It's a charged downpipe system. So why would you go and install a complicated charge downpipe system? Well, the reason is usually because your water tank is a fair distance from the house. So if you were to run a downpipe from your house to the water tank, it's not an easy exercise and it's not gonna look so good. So what you wanna do is hide all your pipes so you don't physically see the pipes from your house leading into the water tank. So the pipes are actually buried under the ground. And because they're buried underground, it's the wet system, it's a charge system. So those downpipes are full of water all the time. Much like if you have a look at this water tank, it's a fair distance from the house. So there's no pipe work above ground leading from the house to the tank. It's all under the ground, it's all buried. So it's a charge system. So now we've got to understand why the downpipe was full of water. It was a charge system because it's a water tank and the downpipes were full of water. And if you want to do it properly, you would then figure out how to actually design the pipes to make the system work efficiently. So what's that got to do with the fact that it was causing a water leak? Now, the funny thing about modern houses is that it's usually built on a small block. You've got a water tank, but because it's a small block, you may not have eaves. So the gutter is fairly close to the outside walls. So if the gutters do overflow backwards, and there's not enough provision for overflow outwards, then it goes into the house. So for instance, if you look at this particular property, you can see that there's no eaves. The gutters are right up against the side of the house. So you can see that if the pipes do block up, then you can get an overflow back into the house. So what causes the pipe to block up? Well, many things. 
When you have a gutter, you have debris. The debris goes into the downpipe. And you're supposed to have a leaf diverter to divert most of the large debris away from the downpipe. So what goes into the downpipe is mainly fairly clean water. But if this leaf diverter hasn't been installed or it doesn't work properly, then the debris will go into the downpipe, go underground, and then ultimately cause a blockage. running down the wall anywhere else as you can clearly see it's not you see the difference because it's, it's all charged up into that line here and when the water doesn't go into the water tank anymore it builds up comes up the downpipe and as a result the rainwater cannot flow anymore and it flows backwards into the house and that's how we found this really tricky leak that we couldn't figure out because we just didn't know anything about charged downpipes. Now, whenever a new requirement comes into the building industry, there's usually a lack of appreciation on what the system is supposed to do, even though there are the guidelines that you're supposed to follow. So when we went to have a look at a house recently, we saw some quite interesting features. So in this instance, because of the mesh, dirt builds up on the outlet of the nozzle and then it won't go through the mesh and the dirt then gradually goes up the nozzle and as a result, we'll have a look here. That's where the nozzle is. You can see, see the amount of dirt, the dirt's actually filled up all the way up here and this downpipe doesn't work at all. Uh, so that's what happens, the silt just builds up and then as a result you get nice plant growth like this. And it's happening to all three of these leaf, leaf diverters on that side. And look at that one there, it, the nozzle's actually fallen out. So we have plants growing out of the top of the leaf diverter. And this is because the installation has been done incorrectly. Now, the plumber has done the right thing. He's put a leaf diverter in, but there's a couple of things that he has done incorrectly. One, the leaf diverter is just too high. It's, it's way up the top of the roof and you never get anyone up there to do the maintenance. Now, if you knew how the charge pipe system works and why there's a leaf diverter, you can read between the lines and go, we've got to put this leaf diverter in a certain elevation. So the leaf diverter has got to be physically be higher than the inlet into the tank because otherwise the water will be pouring out of the downpipe. So physically it's got to be higher, right? And the other thing is it's got to be not too high so that the owner can get a ladder and go up and clean the leaf diverter on a regular basis. So all these things need maintenance. Now, if it's all the way up two stories, it'll never get clean. And that's the reason why we've got growth. And what does the growth mean? It means that the downpipe gets blocked up. And this means that the water's got nowhere to go. You can see from the video that the nozzles are physically clogged and there's no water going into the downpipe at all. So the water goes backwards and into the house. So as a roofer doing roof repairs, I just didn't know that I had to learn all the intricacies about charged downpipes, rainwater tanks, and how this new requirement can actually cause a problem and cause a roof leak. So the lesson here for me is never think that you know everything. There will always be something that I don't know about. And if I didn't spend the time to invest in teaching myself new things, there'll be a lot of 
challenges out there that I will not be able to cope with. So I always assume that I only know part of the truth. And the discovery of more is what drives me to keep doing this line of work. So I'm not that smart, but I'm certainly willing to learn.